Hey folks, first of all, thanks for the overwhelming response to my Pro 800 video. You are amazing. In this video, you will hear if the Behringer Pro 800 has been improved with the first firmware update. And you will hear direct comparison of the envelope speed between the Pro 800 and other synths in my studio. Stay tuned. Firmware update 1.2.0. You can update without any problems via the Synthribe app. Don't forget to download the newest version of the app and of course your current version can't find the Pro 800. The app also comes with a full featured editor for the Pro 800. At least on Mac you can use it alongside your DAW. This makes it much easier for you to access the global parameters and to save and recall your own presets. And of course, there are the famous envelope speed settings. A nice macro, however, would be nice for Ableton. Who makes one? Other than that, I don't know what the changes in the new firmware really are, as I couldn't find a release note. But I have to disappoint you about the envelopes. They are still terribly slow. I also found that the arpeggiator has a tendency to lose nodes during external USB sync. Since I did not want to make a troubleshooting and beta test video, I decided not to do that and used the internal arpeggiator from Ableton for the following sound examples. The synths without MIDI use their own arpeggiator. The envelopes. Some of you were a bit offended by my claim that the envelopes on the Pro 800 are extremely slow. And I can reassure you, I have studied this quick start guide in detail. I knew that there were different envelope characteristics in the menu. In my 80s demo and background track, I also used this setting for the sounds. And at this point, a shout out to Tom Noyes, who made some super interesting Pro Eternet videos and even presented a clever workaround by reversing the envelope. Don't miss this one. However, I deliberately made the sound demo during the overview tour with the init sound that Behringer offers after unpacking when you select the empty bank B. And this includes the slow envelope curve. This is the default. Meanwhile, several users have confirmed that not only in my dim memory the original had a very similar slow curve. The fast setting doesn't solve the problem either. All examples here are made with a new init patch that I saved with the fast envelopes. Next to the filter, envelopes are the salt in a synthesizer soup. That's why I decided to produce this reaction video and compare the envelopes of different synthesizers from my studio. But listen for yourself.
Conclusion. Of course, this is a rather unscientific approach, but it is what you hear. I also saw some people on Gearspace or Sequencer DE who recorded oscilloscope diagrams to show that there is a delay in the attack phase. But I don't want to bother you with this stuff. And as the Juno 6 manual says so well. When all the ADSR sliders are set at zero, the waveform will be an extremely short pulse wave and only a short click is hard. Please be careful. What else is there to say? At least with the Pro 800 you really don't need to be careful. And here is my very own theory why the Pro 800 is the way it is. Beringer has also announced clones of top-notch synths like the Prophet 5, the VUBXA or the Jupiter 8, which will certainly be more expensive than the Pro 800. And so, it makes perfect sense that this clone of the Prophet 600 should be as close to the original as possible. What it is to my eyes and ears. It would make no sense at all to make it sound like a Prophet 5. It's a copy of a rather simple, easy to use synthesizer from the 80s. And the original had exactly the same flaws that made it less desirable compared to other bigger synths of the time. This is my understanding of the Behringer Pro 800. And in any case, I would not recommend it as an all-around analog synthesizer for the beginner. That would be too cheap. There are much better options for less more, like the Hydra Explorer or even the DeepMind. On the other hand, Beringer has made a very nice clone of a vintage synth that will easily add some analog 80s vibe to your productions. 
And thanks to its simple but efficiently implemented MIDI specs, it can be very useful as a controller, for example, for the countless Profit 5 plugins that are on the market. So, what do you think? Leave a comment. And if I've steered up your guess so much that you want to buy a Pro 800 or any other nice synthesizer, you'll find the affiliate links in the description. I appreciate your support. See you in the next video. Peace and Dankeschön from Berlin.